Thank you, Philippine. And uh, I would like to start by uh, greet all the people who are here this morning in order to listen our experience and to share with us their feeling and also help us to improve our process. So uh, before to start, I would like quickly to uh, present uh, my organization, call it IEG Africa, uh, based in Dakar, and uh, who, which was a, in the, which is an independent non-profile organization. Uh, which capitalized 15, more than 15 years of experience in Francophone West Africa, particularly. And IEG work on issues of sustainable development and citizenship in Africa, which emphasizes on methodological innovation and participatory tools. So we have a, 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 a story with the IAED, <laughs> because uh, yeah, IEG Africa is creating on 2005, and he took over the Thailand program of IIED, set up in Senegal or in, in Dryland region in 1993. And IED now try to continue and to reinforce learning and experience uh, sharing with IIED. And we continue to work on sustainable agriculture through, through farming, of innovation and family farming, uh, management of land and natural resources, accountability and citizen control of public action, and finally climate change. And we have a very strong uh, component on communication and knowledge sharing. So just after this quick uh, presentation introduction to my organization, I would like to come to our experience regarding this, this project. So, uh, but before to come to the methodology or to the approach on the field, I would like to give you a very little insight in the context of Senegal regarding land, land governance and land issues. So Senegal is a silent country, as you know, and, and it is in West Africa. And access to land in rural area is very crucial in Senegal because we have 70% of the population who live in a rural area. And they try to make a lot of effort uh, to improve the land governance. Since independence, Senegal, Senegalese governance have made a multiple legislative effort to increase rural land productivity and improve land channel security uh, by setting up a several policy like decentralization of land administration and support the interests of smallholder and pastoralists. Some efforts such as the decentralization of land administration have proved somewhat illusionary, <laughs> illusionary because the central government retained significant authority as well have so far. The national law uh, set up in 1964 is a main legal reference as far as land is concerned in Senegal. In 1964, the government passed the national domains law, that is what we call domain national, which was intended to, to foster productive use of land and create an economic environment conducive to agriculture export. The national domain law classified about 90% of all land in Senegal has a state on it. The, proper, the property of land doesn't exist in Senegal regarding the rural land. And Senegalese land is classified by zone. We have four zones. The first one is an urban zone, and incl it's, which includes urban area or community settlement. The second zone is called a classified zone, including land that is governed by specific status, such as classified forest, national park, and other government protection area. The third land is a territorial land, called it zone de terroir, include agricultural land and non-classified forests in the national domain. And the last zone is called it pioneer zone, which includes all remaining land, 
And with the decentralization policy, rural council have right to manage and allocate territorial land. So most of our important land is in the rural area and is called it the zone de terroir. And this area is managed by rural council. And since a uh, few years, rural council become, became a community, commune area. The central government has the authority to, to design selected territorial land as needed for public utility and reclassify them as a pioneer zone, thereby removing them from the jurisdiction of the rural council and take it into account under its, its management. So the law also decentralizes control over land to local governance body. Now the municipality and the rural community manage the land since 1960 and since 1972. This law provides a structure for the elective rural council and the ambit to their authority. As a representative of the rural community, the rural council has the authority to allocate use right to land conditional over the landholders' economically productive use of the land. The rural council has the authority to retake land that is not used productively and allocated to other users. The law requires all land transactions to be conducted through and recording with the Rural Council, and the Rural Council has authority to decide land dispute in this jurisdiction. All stake stakeholders now in this context recognize that the issues of rural development in Senegal uh, is linking, strongly linked to the insufficiency of current legislation to meet the difficulty land issues facing by the country. And since 2001, with the new constitution, they try to, to guarantee the gender equality. And national land policy appear to foster gender neutral access to land. That is a law. But despite the support for equitable access in the formal law, in large measure, social and religious norm continues to dictate women's land rights. Most women access land through their husband, and the security of their right is depending on maintaining the relationship with their husband. Women often have authority to determine what crops they will plant and manage in the cultivation, but their husband or male relative accept overall right to the land. Even if you have the decentralization of land allocation, authority to rural council have not altered the effect of the customary and religious system on land rights. Female representation on rural council is very rare or missing. Even if you have a parity law, which give 50% place to the men and 50% place to the women, but the, the presence, the leadership are for, of women are missing at this stage where all the decisions are taken. The land allocation women by rural council tend to be smaller in size and less productive than plot allocated to men. So if we have two people who ask, who, who formulate a demand for land, the priority is given to the men. That is the national domain law has increased the insecurity of women's land rights because women and other marginalized groups may not have to, to the most productive and most important uh, land in, in a lot of parts of the country. That is just a, a context that I would like to share before to go now to what we are doing in the two communities. In this context, we, we start our work in two communes, Darofodos and Dodel, where the process was stopped due to the land grabbing conflict, which brain come in to stop all implementation linked to the law. In Darofodos, when we start the work, the first phases were emphasized on the sensitize, sensitization of women and all the different stakeholders 
engage it to work on the land. And we divided our process through four major components. The first one was the make a focus on capacity building with a lot of uh, training to the women through their organization, a training for elected council for just bring them to understand the key challenge face it on the land issue or land access to for women. The second component through this uh, experience was um, local dialogue. We have uh, several conversations between the women and between the women and the different other stakeholders, including the chief, village chief, the local elected organization or private sector working on, on in Darofudos. This conversation bring, bring actors to understand what kind of challenge they're facing and how they need to improve access to, to woman land. And after this conversation, with several of them, people work and decided to set up a land committee access extent to women. This group of women represent them in the uh, meet, during the meeting of uh, elected council. They have the role to, 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 to represent women to take part of decision making on land of the commune of Darfudos. Because in general, when the decision making is taken by local commune, by elected commune, elected council, sorry, they decided to allocate land through the demand submitted by those who want to access to the land. But in general, they don't allocate land to women because they give the priority to men and they up, they told that women are a member of the family farming. But if the chief of this farming asks to the land, the priority is given to those who are a chief of women, but who's the chief of this family because the women are a member of this, this family. But with this process, we bring them to, to, to know that women are also need to access to the land for their own activity, because they take part of the family. They support the health expand, and they need to develop their own activity, even they are a member of the existing family. And when they set up a land committee, they accept to see the woman sitting around the table when they take decision, when they take the decision to allocate land and to control the decision. When they step on the, on the table, they couldn't take part of the process. They are just there for control the process and for sharing the process with 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 the other women who which they represent. The last the last thing in this process is so the different conversation bring all the stakeholders to design a local participatory charter on land governance through the angle of gender sensitivity. So after different dif different conversation, after different policy dialogue, uh, women and and local elected decided to set up a different provision uh, to negotiate a process for design different provision which will tend to change the thing in the rural uh, in the at the rural at the local level in order to change the way to take decision on land issues. And the land committee has the role to support women to submit more land demand to the committee. So now we are at the stage of adoption of this local charter because it takes a long time before to bring the elected community to adopt this, this, this tools because there's the provision include 
some interesting things like uh, one which try to allocate at least 30% of land demand to women by year. So it's it's a very relevant provision, but it is difficult to bring uh, elective council to accept this kind of provision. In this process, we share it some, we have it some lesson uh, regarding to the process and also the content. The first lesson we have noted is the process improve relationship between women and local elected and creates opportunity of dialogue on land issues. Because before this uh, intervention, there are not space where elected and women have the opportunity to discuss on to exchange. And this process bring this space of, of dialogue. The second point that we are learning is advocacy and monitoring is a key dim dimension on the way to improve voice of women. Because there are a lot of processes which aim to improve participation of women in the land decision making, but it is still difficult to know what results have been achieved so far. Because uh, we have an intervention, we stop and another intervention come before to capitalize on what 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 is what was doing before this the last the last intervention. Another point that we would like to share regarding this process is access to land is not an end in itself. Because women used to say yes, it is important to access to land, but if we don't have the capacity to explore to, to to use this right, right this land, men will say yes. They want to access to the land, and they don't have the means to, to to explore it. And that's why it is important to try to see if we could link access to the land to access to the access to other other assets like financial issues uh, or something like that. So it is important to 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 give men to the women to explore the right to, to work on this land. Another point learning during the process is negotiation process on land take a long time before to reach the goal and present sometimes some risk regarding the turnover of the elected because just after five years, we need to, the, or election could change the team, the elected uh, council. And it's to bring the process to stop or to restart. I think it's important to take into account the fact that uh, it's, if it takes a long time, you could lose the, the process. And the last learning is communication and knowledge management strategy is very relevant in this kind of process. And it's allowed to, to share the lesson learning during this process and also to, to reinforce the network at the national level for upscaling all the process implemented at the, at the local level. That is just quickly what I would like to share with you.